Oh, it's me again. Let's see, today's December 13th, and it's 12:08 p.m. or December 13th, 2011, 12:08 p.m. And hopefully this video won't be too long. Just wanted to share some of my perspectives on, I guess, a lot of the different things that have been, I guess, going on. Let's see, right now in the world, I guess, well, when it comes to the global economy, pretty much, well, we'll have to. Like, if or when that global reset of the economy and monetary system happens, we'll have to face it and deal with that when or if that happens, you know, and most likely it's a matter of when and hopefully it won't be as chaotic. As long as you stay aware, you know, and I guess keep your wits about you and everything, you should be able to navigate that and everything. And, well, in terms of what's going on in the Mideast right now, we'll just have to keep on watching how that's developing like there's a whole issue with the whole thing about the u.s drone winding up in iran and everything and my honest opinion on that like you know it's not a drone is not worth starting a war over but this is something that you know i think our military really needs to look into our drones make sure they're all safe and everything make sure they're secure i guess like hardware and software wise make sure that's just my opinion that's just my opinion but in terms of like everything going on in the Middle East, i guess like i'll share some of my spiritual s perspectives in a sense and as always i'll try and i'll include some articles and some clips and also i'll probably include this link to i guess it's kind of like an essay i guess i wrote yesterday pretty interesting i guess i guess like it takes in some scientific spiritual religious and also like my personal perspectives and opinions like I guess on a lot of different things and like I say I'm a very spiritual person not really religious I don't like to see myself as religious but you can't deny that there is some spiritual truth that we are seeing unfolding like in our world right now as we speak and the truth is if you really have faith don't fear don't fear in a sense like at this point there really is nothing to really worry about everything is going to be all good Everything's going to be all good, trust me on that. And like, what I was saying about the whole Mideast situation and everything, like, if you really read all the texts, it doesn't matter if, like, you know, Judaism, Christianity, or Islam, if you really, like, you, if you really do your research, if you really trace it all back, they're pretty much, it's not just, like, they're brothers, it's, they're pretty much the same family. It all goes back to Abraham, and like, you know, the lines of David and everything, and, like, I think in one of my other videos, I mentioned something about, oh, Hagar in the line of Christ and everything. I think I got that a little bit wrong. I think Hagar, that was Abraham, was that Abraham or Isaac's wife? Well, you see, like, I, sometimes, I forget the names and the details, but just understand there was a lot of, like, you know, I guess, interconnectedness back then, in a sense, in terms of, like, you know, human relations and, like, you know, like, Abraham, he had more than one wife, more than one child offspring and like essentially if you really take it all back and even if you go even further back and some like evidence that has been uncovered recently about like essentially it's this one text called the gospel of the magi supposedly like if this is true if you really trace it like the third son of adam and eve seth like his la his offspring went to the east so if you think about that like asia so that would be china india you know and all of that it's pretty much like you see that's like they're also from the same family so if you really trace it all back everyone is kind of like the same family on like a global scale in terms of humanity if you really think about it like that if you really think about it like that and the interesting thing is it doesn't matter which text i choose to read like if it's the holy bible if it's a little bit from the teaching of buddha or if it's the essential like from this book the essential quran which is like, it's an interesting collection, The Heart of Islam, that's what it says. And basically, also some readings from Lao Tzu, so that's like some Chinese Eastern Confucian philosophies. Also this, like, by Alan Watts, and, like, even, like, you know, some modern perspectives. You know, some people say, oh, Michio Kaku, he's, like, Illuminati, he's all, like, you're, like, I've heard that, and everything. But at the same time, like, you know, I don't really, like... You can't let the symbols rule you. You know, a lot of the thing, like, I guess, like, the way I phrased it, like, in terms of, like, the whole thing they talk about, like, 
Satanism and stuff like that. Like, in terms of that, like, I'll say this. I don't believe in Satanism, but that doesn't mean I don't think that it's real. In a sense, like, the, the real truth here is, like, it only has power over you if you believe in it. That's the lie. That's the illusion, in a sense. So, if you really trace it back, what the word Satan literally means is the opposition. It's just the opposition. So, if you really think about it, and I think the first time that phrase appeared was in the book of Job. And basically, if you really think about it, Job is almost like an internal conversation. It's with Job and all that is, and also like the opposition, which is almost like, if you think about it, it's like a self-defeating voice within you. And like it go, all goes back to the angel on one shoulder, the demon on the other. In a sense, we are the X factor. We are the cross point. It's our choice. That's where free will comes into play. So you see, it's like that. So certain things, it all makes sense. It all makes sense. And if you, it doesn't matter now. Because at any point, like, it doesn't matter which book I pick up, like, I'll hear almost, like, the same thing. Like, maybe it's something unique for me, or, I don't know, I don't know, it's strange. You know, it's strange for me, but it's something, it's very beautiful if you really think about it. And that's why, like, at this point in history, we cannot allow, like, you know, things to slip into chaos. Because, in a sense, like, if you really read what these books say, like, you know... It says, like, you know, behold what I have laid out for you. Like, you know, a beautiful promise and everything. And if we really listen to each other right now, we can figure out the solutions. You know, there's some good ideas out there. There's that whole Thrive movement and documentary. And the truth is, I only got a chance to watch it last night. And it's like, you know, it's amazing when you see a lot of, like, you know, your perspectives and ideas, you know, like, wow. You know, this is exactly, like, you know, the things that people need to be aware of and, like, you know, certain dynamics and everything. You know, it really is, you know, it's beautiful in a sense. It's beautiful when you see things like that. So, in a sense, I feel like, yes, there has been a massive perceptional shift in the terms of all of humanity, you know. There has been a massive perceptional shift. It's the year of atonement, in a sense, you know, at one mind. At one meant. Meant means mind. So, you know everything is being decoded and it's interesting like which verse is that maybe I'll go to it at another point but it's interesting how you know like they talk about you know the churches and everything you know Christ says like you make like like basically we make up his, the church in a sense like the body of Christ like all of us together in a sense like what he was really saying is like you know he's talking about in a sense somewhat like a collective but it's in a sense Everything, my perspective has been shaped by everybody else's perspective, in a sense, whether I believe it or not, like, basically, everyone has helped contribute to how I see the world, you know, so basically, like, what that means is, like, you know, everyone has a purpose, a reason for being here, so that means don't take anything, don't ever take anything, ever, ever for granted, that's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. But, like, basically he says, like, you know, we make up the body of Christ. And, like, you know, he says the body of Christ, like, you know, you're the right hand of God. And, you know, if God is all that is, that's my perspective of it. It's not some supreme being that lords over us. No, it's just the way things are. And, you know, there's certain karmic laws. And, like, you know, we're the avatar or, like, the personification of this consciousness that holds everything together, you know. That's just my perspective. So, in a sense, the right hand of God, if your hand is, like, right hand of God, that means you're still part of God. So, you know, son of man, son of God, like, man, God, you know, it's that reflection and everything. It's really interesting. It's really interesting when you look at it from that way. And, you know, when, like, I think, yes, it was Paul, and it was interesting. Like, basically, Paul, I think... Like, a lot of it, he does say, you know, this is just my opinion and everything. So, you got to understand the context, the context, you know. Even, like, you know, the Quran and everything, you need to understand Muhammad's context, where, where he was coming from, what he was up against, you know. It was the time of the Crusades and everything, you know. We live in a new world, a new reality. So, in a sense, like, you know, maybe it is time to write a new book for all of us, in a sense. Like, what, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how things unfold. You know, it's interesting. Very, very interesting. But you know how Paul was talking about, like, you know, like, love your wife as Christ loved the church. And, you know, it, Paul keeps on referring to his church as her 
and everything. And if you think about it, like what they're really talking about in the book of Revelations, you know, the rebuilding of the temple, they were referring to the human body, you know, who was Christ's church, if you really think about it, if you really think about it, you know, love your wives as Christ loved his church. You know what he's talking about. So, in a sense, there's that one joke, you know, they said, oh, you know, staying in bed Sunday morning and just like, you know, shouting, oh my God, is not going to church or praise and worship. Actually, the truth is, it is, it is. Because that's once you remove the illusion of original sin. Because if you really think about it, original sin, like this is my perspective, what they're talking about. In a sense, they say Eve was tempted first. You know, like there's one perspective, you know, she discovered, you know, like I guess those certain pleasures and everything. And she shared it with Adam. And basically, the thing is, if you really think about it, it was a big misperception. If you think about it, if God, the devil, and everything, it's an internal conversation. You know how, like, you know, if we're exploring the world, we're observing, we're trying to figure things out, basically, what happened was we were in Eden, but it wasn't that we were cast out. It's essentially our perspective. Like, you know, the right hand of God was cut off because we, like, you know, fooled ourselves and fell into an amnesia about who we really are, in a sense. Because if you really think about it, what happened was, okay, Eve was tempted first, then she tempted Adam. When they made love for the first time, because you know what always happens the first time. And if you think about it, like, you know, it goes back to the blade and the chalice and, like, you know, the cup and everything. He probably saw blood and he thought he hurt her. He thought he hurt her and maybe, and basically she was hurt because, you know how it is and everything so basically that right there it was that total misperception that threw everything out of whack and then they started to feel bad about each other and then if you think about that how that same dynamic it can apply to so many different things it can apply to so many different things that's why you know I've had some profound revelations I've had some very 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 profound revelations recently about like the true meaning of certain scriptures and everything and it's real interesting like basically you know I take I'm a very spiritual person I can't say that you know I really favor one text over the other it's like you know I think they're all essential to a certain degree you know like all these perspectives need to be taken into account they're all valid they all need to be respected but they need to be understood they need to be truly understood what it really means and you know the truth is it's not supposed to keep us you know in prison it's supposed to you know free us essentially so long as it's for good because there is a good and evil a moral right and wrong and if you listen to my last video I kind of explain you know I guess my perspectives about like you know the Ten Commandments and everything and that's just my perspective and like always I could be right I could be wrong about what I'm saying but you know like my perspectives are still my perspectives in a sense and I just want to share them I just want to share them with whoever wants to listen and basically some of my favorite versions of I guess you know the Holy Bible I guess New Living Translation and the New King James Version and you know the very interesting thing if you really think about it like how everything's somewhat connected I'll show you I'll show you right now like you know New King James Version James a bond James a bond servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ so it's very interesting it's very interesting how that all works out and like I'll tell you like how like basically here are just some of my perspectives oh yeah and here I wrote this like essay yesterday and basically it's about theory on the effects of radiation evolution and life and like well I titled it a little bit differently but I have it on Facebook and hopefully I'll link I'll put a link to it in the video and everything and like oh yeah here I just wrote something about like a few of my New Year's resolutions I decided for myself this is something maybe you're aware of ah you're probably not aware of maybe I mentioned it in one of my earlier videos I'm not sure but at the same time like you know like some of these were made at a time of fear like you know certain little things like if it's smoking cigarettes or some other things like that you know it really doesn't like matter in the grand scheme of things these things are little like you know it's petty and like it shouldn't be worried about but here this is like you know I kinda drew it out a little bit more but this is my perspective of like a top-down view this would be that you know these food arcs 
or food chips and like you would look down and these are basically solar panels on either side then rows of crops and then here there would be the control tower the bridge and then there would be the engine room and like you know a desalination filtration plant water purification plant inside to you know like I guess you know water the crops and maybe even you know create you know drinking water supply and like you know there's all sorts of ideas and everything you know like put that there but you know I'm not trying to like you know like it's not for a financial gain or anything like this if anything ideas like this need to be shared and like you know in vitro meat I mentioned that in the last video and everything and also like you know various food crops and everything and even the whole thing about cannabis and it's interesting how that plays into you know my essay and everything and my perspectives and also like I'll give you I'll show you something very beautiful like I'll I'll give away something from my essay in a sense like a little hint and everything and like it's just too blatant the truth is too blatant I'll I'll tell you I'll tell you but it's it's really cool it's really cool and you know like here like that's how the solar panels will be and this is kind of like a cross section view you know I had a lot of like books as a child and everything like you know like I guess you know how to build things and like what else do we have here uh where is my book uh where is it where is it where is it uh let's see ah here it is yeah like how things work you know like so basically you know everything has a purpose everything has a purpose so like here this is a cross section view that you would have like crops growing in there and everything and then like the solar panels will be up here and there will be a top down view you could have sprinklers to water the crops and then like there would be harvesters who would drop it down to below and you could have processing areas where like you know you could like turn the grain into flour or like you know it could be rice or something or you know it would be really interesting it would be really interesting food crops growing in open sunlight you know and all this like food crops drop down from the deck and everything and then there would be a forklift and everything imagine and like here for size comparison that would be an aircraft carrier and that would be this food arc right there so that's just one idea and like I told you about like I guess my essay and everything and like I said all these different perspectives are interesting and the key here right now at this point whatever happens don't fear don't fear in a sense just stay aware keep watching how things unfold but don't fear, don't fear, but here, from the book of Revelations, and at one point I said, like, I think maybe in a video, or even in some of my writings, because I have a lot of writings that are very interesting, and everything, and, like, it's really, really interesting, and I said at one point, like, oh, you know, like, the, like, you know, it's all a lie and everything, no, it's not a lie, it's just, it's been horribly, horribly misinterpreted, it's been horribly misinterpreted, and I'll tell you why, because, like watch some of the links in the last video that I posted and I'll post a link to that one in this video too but basically okay Revelation chapter 22 okay and then verse 2 in the middle of its street and on either side of the river was the tree of life which bore 12 fruits each tree yielding its fruit every month the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations were for the healing of the nations and like basically you can read in my essay I'll link I'll put a link to it I'll put a link to it and like that was the New King James version and like it says here again it flowed down the center of the main street on each side of the river grew a tree of life bearing 12 crops of fruit with a fresh crop each month the leaves were used for medicine to heal the nations. Medicine. And if you think about it, way back in the day, like, before, like, you know, because if you trace the root word, sorcery meant, comes from a Greek word, pharmakia. Pharmakia, pharmacy, pharmacology, you know, and everything. It's almost as if they're creating all sorts of new diseases and everything, and, like, you know, like, giving, like, oh, here, take this poison for that, this poison for that. If you go back to the ancient times, doesn't matter which culture, if it was, you know, from, like, the cradle of life's, civilization to South America, North America, to the East in Asia, pretty much like medicine in the olden days, aside from all the natural herbs and everything, the three most well known and well prescribed by the ancient like medicine men and like I guess like some of them were considered holy men and everything were basically alcohol, 
opium, or cannabis. You know, in its natural intended form, those are medicine. And you know, like, it, you know, it puts you at ease, you know, and it, like, it helps clear the mind for some people, but, you know, it needs to be used responsibly in its intended form. And, you know, and that taken in combination with other herbs, and, you know, I guess, like, you know, have a more open mind about different spiritual techniques and everything, you know? It's really interesting stuff. That's just my perspective, you know? That's just my perspective. It's my perspective. I could be right, I could be wrong. But, you know, it's interesting how they say in, like, you know, all the holy texts, like, yeah, you'll be persecuted for the truth and everything. And if you look at it, a lot of people are. A lot of people have been for a long time, a long time, and I feel it's wrong. I feel it's wrong. And, you know, if you really think about it, look at the last video I made and a lot of the links I put, like, you know, about cannabis in its medicinal uses, and even to, like, you know, for textile uses, you can build houses, clothing, you know, you can make food out of it, you know, and the thing is, there's also articles out how, you know, they did a study where, like, in an area where they had medical marijuana, and they wanted to see what happened, like, you know, did the, like, what happened with the rates of fatal, like, driving accidents, what happened, they went down, they went down in areas where people were smoking weed, and I've actually heard that people who smoke weed, you know, they actually, they're safer drivers and everything, so that must be looked into. That's something that must be looked into. I think this is legitimate. This is legitimate. You need to, you need to look into it because it's really legitimate, and I can post a link to that too and everything, so it'll be interesting. It'll be very interesting. And, you know, I have other perspectives too, like, you know, I was saying about, like, you know, like, you know, greening the Middle East. Like, you know, if we can put an end to all these wars, and, you know, we are having, like, several wars have just, they're just being wrapped up, you know, and, like, we got to see how this unfolds and continues to unfold, you know. Imagine if they could set up, like, you know, like, within the desert, like, doesn't matter if it's Saudi Arabia, Iran, Libya, Sudan, you could set up huge growing places to grow crops of food, you know. And as long as it's open and transparent and, you know, there's no like all that genetically mo modified organisms and whatnot and you know we're open about it and everything it would you know I think you know there's a lot of solutions there's a lot of solutions to a lot of our perceived issues you know a lot of solutions and you know like if that's true you know the tree of life and everything and you know if you think about it marijuana Mary Jane Virgin Mary, you know, and Sensamia, Sinsamia, without seed and everything, so that's very interesting, very, very interesting, and, you know, I could write a whole book about this stuff, but, but, you know, it's very interesting, it's very interesting, you know, if the implications are true, maybe it's time to write a new book, eh? like, I don't know, but we'll see how things unfold, like, you know, like, always, always remember the greatest, you know, I think what should be the greatest commandments, faith, hope, and love. You know, and the greatest of these is love. You know, and you got to apply that to, like, yourself and every situation that you find yourself in, you know. And I guess that's all I got for now. So I guess, you know, remember, faith, hope, and love. Be love. That's all I got. Peace.